Well, as you know, Rochester is home to some remarkable women, past and present. They've overcome tragedy to help others. They've built churches in shattered barriers. Today, we highlight just some of them, women who are making a difference in our community right now. Good evening, everyone. Leah Lando joins me in this special report on the remarkable women of Rochester. March is International Women's Month, and last December, you may remember, we asked you to nominate a woman you think should be Next Star Broadcasting's Woman of the Year. We received nearly 100 nominations, and we narrowed that down to four finalists joining us right here live in the studio. At the end of the show, we will introduce the winner. Rochester's remarkable woman will join other remarkable women from around the nation and travel to New York City. They will be in the audience of the Mel Robbins show in March. At that time, Robbins will announce the next star woman of the year. And as we mentioned, we do have a live studio audience here right now, including the finalists, their friends, family and colleagues, and a warm welcome to all of you in studio today. Our first finalist is a Rochester institution. For some 60 years, Bishop Eula Nelson has provided real services and real healing to the most vulnerable of our citizens. Her influence is felt not just in Rochester, but across the country. And I want you to know that I'm here to pray for you. Some call her Mother Nelson, but this 86-year-old powerhouse of a preacher is also a bishop. In 2018, Pastor Eula Nelson became only the third woman in the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World to be ordained to one of the highest leadership positions in this church. I am humbled and proud because uh, finally women have been recognized as being um, uh, good teachers and leaders. Bishop Nelson founded the Bible Way Healing Assembly in 1966. The church is located in Henrietta, but before then it was located in Rochester. In the earliest days, she preached from her own home. Today, some 600 to 700 people attend services at Bible Way, and many more benefit from its good works, including jail ministry, hospital visits, food banks, clothing drives. You may even be walking along the street with the, with the radio. And Bishop Nelson's regular Sunday broadcasts on radio station WDKX. My mission is to help heal hurting humanity. Bishop Nelson has three daughters and ten grandchildren, one of whom is now a senior pastor in the church she built. Her husband of 56 years is her biggest supporter. My loving, handsome husband who has been with me down through the years. I tell people all the time, we still have honey in the moon. <laughs> it's that focus on love and humor that keeps her going. Nelson isn't just a preacher, she's an author and an academic. For her work in Rochester, she received a key to the city. For her work in the church, she was ordained bishop. And I want you to be encouraged. Bishop Eula Nelson, role model, trailblazer, healer. Maureen McGuire, News 8. And joining us now is Bishop Eula Nelson and the woman who nominated her, Dr. Gomel Breedlove. Dr. Breedlove, why did you nominate Bishop Nelson? Well, you had most of the things on the set already said about how she helped, you know, in the community. And so, but I see Pastor Nelson as a social person for change, mm -hmm. an analyst for change, and that's what she has done. I've seen where our church on Main Street went from 100, 300, 400 people because of the people coming in off the street that were drug addicted, um, had been incarcerated, um, ill, but once they came into the church and Pastor Nelson taught faith and preached faith, <laughs> there was a change. Absolutely. Uh, and Bishop Nelson, a bishop you are. Uh, you have climbed to the highest ranks of your church, but you've stayed true to this community. How does it feel to be named a remarkable woman? Um, I'm very proud and grateful because this community, this is my community. I've fought for um, equality Absolutely. and uh, fought against sexism and genderism. And uh, I just, I, 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 to look at the fruits the, of what I have done, my work, 
I, I am a grateful woman yes. at this age and this stage, and I'm very grateful to you. Oh, wow. We're grateful for you as well. Congratulations, and Dr. Breedlove, thank you for thank nominating you. Pastor Nelson. Thank you. Leah? All right, thank you, Maureen. Well, many of us go through troubling times and know what it's like to lose the ones we love the most, but it's how we react to these challenges that really matters. This next remarkable woman is choosing to help others in the wake of a terrible loss. Meet Denise Wesley. The Wesley family was living what many would refer to as a dream life. They took several vacations, celebrated holidays and birthdays in a big way, and made a lot of great memories over the years. Little did they know this would be one of the last videos of them all together before Tim Wesley was diagnosed with a rare cancer. We had just had Mackenzie's eighth birthday and party. And thought was just the flu or something. Right, daddy has a tummy ache. We're going to go to the hospital and just get daddy some medicine and we'll be back. They did come back, but with some very grim news. Tim was given 18 to 24 months to live. I thought, wow, how do you tell them? After hundreds of hours researching, they finally found a doctor who could help. And we found a list of 10 surgeons in the country, only 10, that perform a um, a surgery that is called HIPAC. The Wesleys believe it was that surgery that gave him five more years. More birthdays, more vacations, just more what people think are, oh, it was just a, you know, a blah day. And our blah days were like awesome days and incredible days because she just gives you such an appreciation for even, even listening to the kids argue. We learned to not sweat the small stuff. They also learned how time-consuming and expensive it was to get the treatment he needed. That's when they decided to start a nonprofit organization called Be Unintimidated, raising money for others fighting cancer. Tim lost his hard fight with cancer in February of 2018. Not a day goes by that his daughters don't think about their father and appreciate their mother's perseverance and optimism. I always hear kids complain, oh, my mom this, oh, my dad that, oh, my gosh, I, my parents are irritating me. Like, so many little things, and I don't, like, I, yes, I used to be like that, and I guess you won't realize it until it happens to you, and until you have a parent gone, or somebody gone out of your life, that you're like, I shouldn't have been complaining. And she was right there next to me, she's like, you know, I want you to be as comfortable as you want, as you can, and I want you to, she's always the one by your side, like, if I need anything, she's always right there, even if she has a million other things going on. Denise left alone to care for her daughters, learn how to operate the family business, and carry on their mission to help others. She says we all need to learn to look on the bright side before it's too late. Stop. Stop. Life's so short. Even just the recent tragedy with Kobe Bryant. I mean, that's waking people up. But how long will it last? Are people awake for five days and then, you know, their, their kids are fighting or they stub their toe or somebody cuts them off in traffic and they're back to being really unhappy and miserable and, you know, everything's so bad. Everything's not so bad. You know, you, you, you can breathe. You're here. And Denise and uh, Katrina Bush joining us now. You are nominated, Denise. I did. You know, that advice that you give, you've been through a whole lot. You could have reacted differently to this. Why did you choose to help others? Because of Tim, um, because of watching what he went through for so many years, even before being sick. He was just a giver. He always wanted to do. He lived life to the fullest. He embraced everything that was in front of him. And to watch the way he lived that six years was so incredible and provided me with so much strength I needed to help others. Your advice to others watching who are going through a terrible time? Yeah. Um, embrace every moment that you have. And like I said before, you just don't sweat the small stuff. It can be gone and your life can change in the matter of seconds. Well, congratulations, Tim. Well, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for coming on. Katrina, you nominated Denise because? Oh, she is the epitome of remarkable. Um, she is an accomplished business professional. She started the nonprofit. She is an amazing mother to two beautiful daughters. And, you know, we've been with her near and far throughout the progress and um, big supporters of Be Unintimidated and always go to the Concedo night and have a great time. And she always has a such positive outlook. You know, her thing is be present. You know, and she talks about it there, and it's one thing that I try to remember every morning I wake up. An important message, and we're sorry that we had to learn it this way, but thank mm -hmm. you so yes. much for coming on. Congratulations. Thank you. Maureen, we're going to send it back to you. All right, thank you, Leah. 
Coming up, we continue to celebrate these remarkable women, including one who's keeping America's promise. See how she goes above and beyond to help Afghan, Iraqi, and Kurdish families who helped the U.S. Welcome back. Our next finalist is a Rochester woman who is keeping the nation's promise. She's helping those who helped the United States in our most challenging times. Meet remarkable woman, Ellen Smith. So this is our kitchen storage area here at the farm. From her and farmhouse in Pittsburgh, Ellen Smith shows off a room full of dishware. It's for people who've risked everything to move to the U.S. After a family gets settled in their home, We'll have the husband and wife come back and she can pick out any little extra things that she might want to make her house a home. Six years ago, Ellen volunteered to help an Afghan resettle in the U.S. Since then, she's built up a group of 300 volunteers. Keeping Our Promise Rochester has a singular mission. Help the Afghan, Iraqi and Kurdish men and women who helped the U.S. and are now targeted by the Taliban and ISIL. We made a promise to these people in Iraq and Afghanistan who helped our military, who helped USAID, who helped the Army Corps of Engineers, who worked at the embassy, who were the cooks and the cleaners at the bases, that if they helped us, we would keep them safe. These are some of the more than 300 people who've been helped by keeping our promise Rochester. They include 110 families, all of them left their homeland under the special immigrant visa program. Keeping Our Promise Rochester greets them at the airport and then offers care and support as they settle into their new life. It helps with everything from food to furniture, housing to jobs. It even has a car grant program that provides them with vehicles so they can get to work. Rochester is a very welcoming community and it's a very healing community. So I, I think that um, 
people, when they come here, they see the best of America here in Rochester. Ellen's home serves as an informal headquarters with donated items filling her porch and her office devoted to the cause. For Ellen, the work is all consuming. It's a 24 hour job when you're called on a Thursday that a family of five is arriving on Monday and you need to find housing. You can't say no. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. Keeping Our Promise Rochester is the only program in the country that starts from the time of visa application to arrival in the U.S. It's a process that can take years. These families are doing quite well and they are proud to call themselves Americans and I'm proud that I got to help them become American citizens. Ellen Smith proves every day how beautiful a promise is once kept. And I welcome to the set now Ellen Smith herself and Erwin Solomon, who nominated Ellen for a Remarkable Woman Award. Why did you nominate Ellen, Erwin? I nominated Ellen because she is the epitome of someone who does right, who is committed, and who works for a cause, and is a magnet for bringing other people into the fold <laughs> and yeah. doing the work that she does. Yeah. I have to add that Ellen works 25 hours a day, mm -hmm. eight days a week. <laughs> to do this. And she is truly a remarkable woman. <laughs> Ellen, you have a fundraiser coming up on March 18th. It's very important. It's crucial to the group's mission, isn't yes. it? Yes. It's at Temple Birth Kodish on March 18th from 6 to 9 p.m. And uh, it's where we raise money so we can help with rent and a security deposit for each family. We can buy them food and to help them get a modest vehicle so they can get to work. And it's really crucial that we have that kind of support from the community. Well, we will make sure to spread the word. But in the meantime, thank you for everything you thank do. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank you so much. All right, we're back in just a moment. We're going to talk about a woman who is proving it's never too late to chase your dreams. Stay right there. Interviewed. Hello, yes, uh, I'm here. Yep. I'll read the in anchor tag here. Oh, okay. Yep. So I'll read the, okay, so Maureen and I could just stand right here the whole time. So if you missed any of our stories in Remarkable Women, head to Rochester. All right, Coast. should com. I be on set for the bump? Yeah, be, well, just in case. Great.
Welcome back, everyone. Many of us have big dreams, but we're wrapped up in the daily grind and feel like we don't have time to focus on them. But one Rochester woman is showing us it is never too late to chase your dreams. Here's the story of Patricia Glykoff. This is David and Daniel. Patricia Glykoff is an award-winning author. She dedicated her latest book to her grandchildren. The person that is teaching you how to read is giving you the best gift you'll ever get. So it's really important that you say to them, thank you for teaching me how to read. She loves to tell stories like this one about her book illustrator. This person, Karen Stashko, who illustrated this book for me, she's like lovely. She is the best artist. And you know what she did for most of her life? For most of her life, she was a hairdresser. She cut hair and curled hair, but she, but she drew pictures. She never let go of her dreams. The same is true for Patricia, who after decades is finally living her dream. I read Little Women multiple times before I was 10 years old, and I resonated with Joe March. I pretended to be Joe March writing books, walking around my house with a clipboard writing books. So that inspired me. But she put her dream of becoming an author on hold, traveling the world for her job in pharmaceuticals and raising a family. Her daughter says she never stopped believing she would eventually accomplish her goals. It was her bucket list item my whole life that when she retired she wanted to write children's books and she truly started the day that she retired. And she's gaining national and international recognition for her series of children's books, bringing awareness to endangered sea creatures. Sea Turtle Circle was my first book published when I was 62. I've written three and all three have won awards and the series won a, an international Moonbeam Award. Glykoff spends a lot of her time traveling to different schools throughout the state and reading to children free of charge. Our greatest asset is children and they need to succeed and they can't succeed unless they can read. If, the, if they don't like to read, they're reading the wrong books. And so that's my message to them. Keep reading. Don't stop reading. Reading is the key that will unlock your dreams. And she has this message for all of us, young and old. Do it. If you have a dream, focus on it. You may not get to it for a lot of years, but don't let go of it. I mean, you might have to do another job and just keep your hand in your dream and stay focused on it and your dream will come true. Advice from a remarkable woman who's living proof that it's never too late to go after your dreams. Well, if you missed any of our remarkable women's stories, head to rochesterfirst.com and click on the lifestyle tab. And up next, we announce the winner of Rochester's Remarkable Woman Contest. Find out who will head to New York City for the Remarkable Woman of the Year Award. One, two, three, check. One, two, three, one, two, three. And welcome back, everyone. All of our finalists are remarkable, but we had to select just one to send to New York City. And a reminder, that finalist will go to the Mel Robbins Show to be considered for Next Star's Woman of the Year Award. All right, ready? The winner is Denise Wesley. Congratulations. Congratulations, Denise. Denise, what do you have to say? Oh. I'm so honored. Um, 
all of the women are so remarkable. I'm humbled, I'm inspired to do even more. Um, I'm just so incredibly proud and honored. And I know most importantly for you, this is calling more attention to your Absolutely. cause to help others who Absolutely. need it. Um, be Unintimidated, it's an amazing organization and we're saving lives and um, we wanna keep doing that. All right, your daughters, I know they're so proud of you. What do you, what do you think your mom? I'm I, very, like, I don't know. I don't know what to say. She just makes me, like, so proud to, like, for me to be her daughter every day, and I just can't believe that she did it. She's just absolutely phenomenal. She does so much for so many other people that it's just, she's just amazing. So. Well, congratulations. Thank Enjoy you. New York. Of course, Thank we'll you. be watching. And uh, Denise will join remarkable women all across the country at the Mel Robbins Show later this month. Uh, that's when she'll announce uh, next star's Woman of the Year. And thank you all so much for coming on. We appreciate it.